Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a teen comedy film called Wild Child. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The story centers around a spoiled teenage girl named Poppy Moore, living in Malibu with her widowed father and little sister. Poppy's mother died in a car crash long ago, and ever since, her relationship with her father Jerry hasn't been the same. She hates him for dating women who are not her mother. When his current girlfriend is about to move in with them, Poppy is furious. She invites her friends and makes them destroy the woman's belongings that are being moved into the house. It is not the first time she has pulled a prank like this. Jerry is sick and tired of her making his life more difficult. Till now, he has been excusing her, considering that she just missed her mother. But now that Poppy has crossed a line, he wants to send her to a boarding school in England. At first, she retaliates, but Jerry is determined to discipline her in the right way. At night, Poppy and her little sister Molly talk about her upcoming life in England. Poppy claims she is relieved people in England at least speak American. Molly realizes how out of proportion her sister is to the real world. She hopes that Poppy will learn something from her stay. The next day, Poppy's best friend Ruby helps her pack and wishes her luck with England's weather. She also promises to take care of Poppy's boyfriend Roddy when she is away. Sus. In the following scene, Jerry and Poppy arrive at the boarding school in the countryside in England. They are welcomed by the school's headmistress, Mrs. Kingsley, who promises to discipline Poppy in no time. All other students are stunned to see her in her over-the-top designer outfit. The head girl of the school, Harriet, also lands her eyes on her and greets her with a handshake. She is an egocentric and proud student who thinks she runs the school. When Poppy refuses to respect her, she is determined to teach her a lesson. Poppy finally bids farewell to her father and walks inside the school. She soon finds out she has to share a bedroom with four other girls, Kate, Josie, Kiki, and Drippy. She bluntly asks them to get out because she wants to be left alone, but the girls only laugh at her. Then, she is told that the girls are only allowed to use their phones on the weekend, but Poppy refuses to do so. A while later, the hostel's matron comes to seize their phones for the week. When Poppy talks to her sarcastically, she, along with the other girls, get detention as punishment. Poppy tries using her old ways by bribing the matron, but it only gets her in more trouble. On her first day of school, she modifies the school uniform to fit her taste. She wears high heels, a tight skirt, and a cropped blazer, unlike the other girls. Her roommates warn her that it might get her in trouble, but Poppy, as always, doesn't care. Then she is told about the school's prefect team, whose leader is the head girl, Harriet. She has a crush on the school's most popular bachelor and the headmistress's son, named Freddie. One of the important rules in the school is that no girl is allowed to fraternize with any boys, especially not Freddie. The headmistress is strictly against her son dating anyone. At night before bedtime, the girls ask Poppy how many guys she has slept with. On hearing the long list, they are shocked because they have been in the all-girls hostel since they were kids and have no experience with boys whatsoever. Later, the matron brings Poppy a proper set of uniforms to wear from the next day. Poppy huffs at her and pretends to go to sleep. But right after the matron leaves, she goes to the computer room to email her best friend Ruby about everything happening in her life. While she is at it, she notices someone walking outside the room. On checking, she finds Drippy in the freezer, having a late night snack. Just then, a fire drill takes place and Poppy is stuck in the hallways. In order to not get caught, she climbs on the roof and enters a bathroom. The bathroom turns out to be Freddy's, who tells her the way out and promises to keep her visit a secret. The following day, Poppy is taken into the school's lacrosse team. The diva in her is horrified by girls running around covered in sweat, but when the head girl Harriet challenges her to a one-on-one -on -one match, she accepts it. They launch at each other, but instead of hitting the ball, they start to fist fight. Harriet stops only when Freddy's car passes by. She is smitten with him and hence is horrified when he greets Poppy a good morning. After he drives off, Poppy makes fun of her for being in love with him. Harriet runs to her dorm room, which consists of several pictures of Freddy, proving her obsession with him. She panics about how he knew Poppy's name, but comes to the conclusion that he was just trying to hide his love for her by talking to a random girl. A while later, Poppy is called by the headmistress, who is disappointed at her for starting a fight. She knows that Poppy is not a bad person and hopes that she will do better in school from now on. 
Poppy is amazed by the headmistress's expectations. For the first time after her mother's death, someone has shown faith in her. Later that day, Harriet is sitting in her room. When she notices Poppy sitting right below the window, she makes her minion dump a bucket of water on her and pretends like she didn't know someone was downstairs. Poppy has to rush to her room, shivering. She misses her friends from back home and is feeling homesick. One of her roommates named Kate notices this and offers Poppy a jumper for her cold. Poppy feels at home with Kate and tells her about her mother's death that happened five years ago. The two talk about their past and form a bond that Poppy had never thought she would make with someone from school. Kate also gives her a secret phone so she can call her friends in America. Poppy calls Ruby, who, surprise, surprise, turns out to be sleeping with Poppy's boyfriend, Roddy. They fake being concerned for her and end the call. Right after, Ruby makes fun of Poppy's appearance and continues making out with her boyfriend. That night, Poppy's roommates decide to help her get expelled from school, which is the only way she can get back to America. Since she so desperately wants to go home, they feel sympathetic and want to help. Poppy is overwhelmed by the love they show to her, even though she has been nothing but rude. Starting the next day, they play a plethora of pranks, dyeing the swimming pool's water red, prank calling Harriet, and spreading rumors about their teachers making out in the school. For the last one, Poppy gets into trouble. She is called to the headmistress's office, but is let go after a simple warning. The girls register that the headmistress is letting Poppy off the hook because she is Jerry's daughter. Hence, they will have to do something out of the ordinary to get her in real trouble. When they are in the bath one day, they think of a brilliant idea. One thing the headmistress hates is her son getting close to any girls from the school. This means if Poppy made out with him, she is bound to be expelled. The next day is the themed dance party where the people from the boys' school will also come. Although the party is Pride and Prejudice themed, Poppy and her group decide to do something extra. They go to the town to shop for the big day and have a lot of fun. Poppy also changes her hair color to brunette, which makes her look exactly like her mother. They secretly steal liquor from a shop, planning to get wasted at the party. The following evening, everything is going well. The students are properly dressed, especially Harriet, who is dressed as Elizabeth. She bores Freddy by speaking to him in lines from the book. The party is then interrupted by Poppy and her group, making a grand entrance in their short modern dresses. Harriet is horrified, but the same cannot be said for Freddy. He seems to be attracted to Poppy. The night turns into a nightmare for the head girl. When Freddy and Poppy dance together, she quickly changes the song to an upbeat one so people would dance individually. Her plan works, but then Poppy dances alone and steals the show. Later, she and Freddy go outside for some alone time, some Poppy playtime. Harriet sends her minions to keep an eye on them. As the two talk, Poppy realizes Freddy is quite an interesting man who actually cares about people. He leans in to kiss her, but the minions interrupt them. The girls decide not to tell Harriet about this because she will make their life miserable trying to separate Freddy and Poppy. Poppy then returns to her friends who are having the time of their lives with the boys. As they talk, she confesses that she has never been intimate with anyone and used to be ashamed of it back home. Hence, she lied to them at first, but now she feels like she can tell them anything without fear of being judged. She also reveals that she might actually like Freddy, not just for the purpose of the prank. The next day, Poppy is invited to lacrosse after Drippy gets sick. She discovers her talent for the game, and the team wins for the first time because of her. The next day in the morning assembly, the headmistress announces that their junior lacrosse team has been selected to play in the inter-school competition for the first time in over a decade. She asks the participants to talk to Harriet if they have any concerns, but then she corrects herself because the students should now go to Poppy instead of Harriet. Harriet glows red in anger at the announcement. Starting the next day, Poppy whips the school's team into shape, getting them into the finals of the competition. Then, one day, she is invited on a date by Freddy. Before going, she is on a computer, sending emails to her friends back home. She forgets to log off, resulting in someone else mishandling her email. Freddy and Poppy go on a date and talk about different things. They discover they have a lot in common and start to fall for each other. On returning to her room, Poppy finds her friends reading an email, exposing that she thinks of them as losers. The group assumes that the email was sent by her and is furious. She tries explaining, but the girls are so hurt that they refuse to listen. When Poppy goes to Freddy to talk, she finds out that he has also received a similar email, exposing that she is only using him to get expelled. 
With no one else to turn to, Poppy sneaks down to the cook's room and calls Ruby. She initially pretends to be interested in what Poppy is talking about, but then accidentally reveals how much she dislikes her. Poppy feels the lowest she has ever been. She gets lost in her thoughts and starts playing with her lighter, which accidentally sets a curtain on fire. She immediately puts it out and runs outside after hearing footsteps approaching. When she is back in her room, she looks out her window to see the fire that she thought was put out has actually spread. She quickly wakes everyone up, but finds out that Drippy is missing. On realizing that she might have snuck out for a late night snack, Poppy goes to save her. With the firefighter's help, they manage to get her out safely. When the fire is extinguished, Freddy finds Poppy's lighter in the mess and assumes she was the one who lit the fire to get expelled. He refuses to hear any explanation and gives the lighter back to her. Later that day, Poppy decides to do one right thing and takes the blame for the fire. The headmistress is disappointed in her, but she acknowledges the fact that Poppy decided to be truthful. She declares that a hearing will be held at the honor court to decide what they should do next. In the following scene, Poppy finds a portrait of her late mother on the 1976 lacrosse team and begins to cry upon realizing her mother attended the same school. While she waits for the honor court hearing, Freddy finds and is convinced the fire was just an accident. At the same time, Drippy and the group match the time that the email was sent and realize someone had tried to sabotage their friendship with Poppy. At the hearing, Poppy gives her testimony. Harriet interrupts her several times and tells her how horrible of a person she is to put everyone's lives in danger. When everyone else speaks in Poppy's favor, she panics and accidentally mentions the lighter. No one had ever said anything about the lighter and no students other than Freddy knew about it. This proves that Harriet was the one who lit the curtains on fire after Poppy ran away. She confesses that she did it, but tries to rationalize it as finishing what Poppy started. In the end, Poppy is let free without any charges, while Harriet is expelled. In the last scene, Jerry comes to visit his daughter and watches the lacrosse finals game. Poppy's dramatic change in both appearance and attitude surprises him. They win the match thanks to her leadership. The father and daughter reunite after the game and hug. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.